Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, and welcome back to another video blog. Today we're going to be talking about doing some blood sugar challenge testing, and I'm going to help define some terms that we use often like glycemic control, uh, glucose tolerance, and glycemic response. In fact, let me start with that today. Uh, these are terms that we hear often, and it's important that you understand what we're talking about when we say these terms and we're using them today. So uh, the first one I want to mention is glucose tolerance. Glucose tolerance is the ability to properly regulate your blood glucose levels after the ingestion of some carbohydrate containing food. Glucose tolerance is one of the measurements we use for blood sugar control and blood sugar regulation. And in fact, pre-diabetes, is termed impaired glucose tolerance. That's another name for it, impaired glucose tolerance. That means that you have a hard time regulating and controlling blood glucose levels after you eat some carbohydrate food, but you are not yet in the diabetes range, which is a blood sugar level over 126 or an A1C of over 6.5. So that's glucose tolerance. Glycemic response is a little bit different. That's the extent to which there's a change in your blood glucose levels after eating some carbohydrate food. So uh, we think of the glycemic index or the glycemic load, and those are measurements of your glycemic response. So how you respond to certain foods like a potato or rice or an apple or maybe some nuts and seeds or some beans and legumes, certain vegetables. Uh, there's a glycemic response to that. The glycemic index is a standardized chart that tells us generally what our glycemic response is going to be. Uh, but there was a 2010 paper written by Whelan et al. Uh, called Glycemic Response is a Personal Attribute. And what he demonstrated is that each person has a unique characteristic glycemic response to each of the foods that they introduced to these people. So he says that GI values, glycemic index values, are actually relative to each person. And that's important. So we talk about eating to the meter, in fact, testing yourself to see how you respond. And that's what we're going to talk about today with our challenge testing. The third term I mentioned is glycemic control. Glycemic control, according to the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, is getting as close to a normal, non-diabetic blood glucose level as you safely can. So that's glycemic control, being able to get as close to normal as possible and doing it safely. And that's both fasting, preprandial before you eat, as well as post-meal blood glucose levels. There was a paper by J. Sklar, MD, in Clinical Diabetes Journal, uh, where he reviewed several clinical trials, and he said, his quote is that landmark trials have demonstrated that meticulous glycemic control reduces the risk of both microvascular and neurological complications of diabetes. Microvascular would be kidney disease, that would be uh, neuropathy in the feet or uh, PAD, peripheral arterial disease, the microvasculature of the eyes, retinal disease, uh, as well as uh, neurological complications, again, like peripheral neuropathy and autonomic neuropathy. So that's a pretty profound statement that good glycemic control, keeping your blood sugar as tight as possible and as close to normal as possible, has demonstrated reduced risks of diabetes complications. So let's talk now about how to challenge blood sugar with food to check your glycemic response. Um, first, uh, we do something called a modified glucose tolerance test. Now, a glucose tolerance test is something you go into the lab, you'll consume about 75 grams typically of uh, glucose in the form of a syrup and then they'll check blood sugar levels both pre and post at various intervals. Sometimes it's 30, 60, 120 minutes. Um, and this is done both for gestational diabetes as well as prediabetes. And to, it's one of the ways to diagnose uh, type 2 diabetes as well. 
Uh, that's not what I'm suggesting. We do something called a modified glucose tolerance test, which this you can do at home with your own blood sugar meter. You check your blood sugar before, and then you're going to consume about 20 to 25 grams of carbohydrates. So that's about a, a half of a large white potato, baked potato, or one large apple. Uh, both of them have about 20 to 25 grams of carbohydrate, uh, and that's easily digestible carbohydrate. The potato is more starch, the apple is more sugar, but uh, essentially by the time they hit your gut, they're both sugar anyway, so, um, and largely glucose. So that's a good uh, test uh, medium. And then what you're going to do is check your peak response time. What is the peak response time? Your peak response time is at what point does your blood glucose level hit its peak? So you check pre this load, then you're going to check it 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, and every half hour thereafter until you see your blood glucose levels start to drop. Now most people we've found will peak at about one hour after they eat. For some people it's faster, like 30 minutes, and by an hour they're already starting to come down. For others, it may take up to two hours or longer for them to hit a peak glucose level. So you want to find out what your peak response time is. And that's what you're going to use to then challenge other foods. So when we talk about blood sugar challenge testing, we're always going to take a reading with our glucometer right before we eat and then whatever your peak response time is. Usually it's one hour. So before we go and challenge foods, we want to do something called a control meal test. So a control meal test uh, is uh, consuming a meal that typically will not raise your blood sugar much. So we recommend using four ounces of protein, and that could be any form of protein, chicken, fish, uh, seafood, eggs, turkey, beef, whatever that is for you, whatever you choose about four ounces, no sauces, no sugar, nothing added, no marinades, just the, just the meat or the protein, and then two cups of fibrous vegetables. So that could be broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, spinach or other greens, some sort of high fiber vegetable with very little starch. Uh, you can use oils if you like, that doesn't make much of a difference but just the two cups of vegetables and four ounces of protein. So you check your blood sugar right before, and then uh, at whatever your peak response time is after that, typically it's one hour. Now when you do blood glucose challenge testing with other foods and other meals, everything you do, you're going to compare back to your control meal. So let's say your blood glucose level was 105 before you ate, and after you ate it was 110 which is pretty good. It only raised you by five. That's your control reading. You know that that control meal raised you by five and you want to shoot for something pretty similar to that. So then uh, you can test different foods. If you like a protein shake, you can test before and after. If you uh, have some meals that you eat, whether at home or out, you can check to see what your glycemic response to those individual meals is a very powerful strategy to understand the best meals for you because again remember glycemic response tends to be relative to the person there's an individual characteristic glycemic response to each food and group of foods so I encourage you to use this strategy uh, check your blood sugar before and after you eat check your peak response time uh, do a control meal and then follow up and do some blood sugar challenge testing and that'll help you keep good glycemic control to prevent diabetes complications. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. Remember to keep climbing and to never give up.